Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to call to order the Public Works Committee meeting for Tuesday, July 26, 2016. First order of business is roll call and determination of quorum. Brenda, whenever you're ready. Doyle? Here. Estes? Here. Solomon? Here. Drew? Here. Nordstrom? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you, Brenda. Next order of business is to adopt the agenda. Do I have any changes? Move to approve. I have a motion to approve by Estes, second by Nordstrom. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Agenda is adopted. Now is the time for general public comment, which is the time for members of the public to discuss or express, uh, express concerns to the committee on any issue, not limited to items on the agenda. Action, however, will not be taken at this meeting on any issue, not on the agenda, except by placement thereon by unanimous vote of the aldermen present. Have no general public comment form, so we'll go ahead and move on to consent items one through 10. I'll open public comment on items one through 10. Uh, once again, seeing no speaker request forms. Move to approve. No Second. one waving at me, I will close public comment. And what? Someone wants to get rolling here. <laughs> <laughs> Would anyone like to remove item uh, one through 10 from um, for separate consideration? If not, then I would certainly entertain a All motion right. to adopt. <laughs> I make that motion now. Thank you, Mr. Estes. We have a motion to approve consent calendar items one through 10 and a second by Nordstrom. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Mm. Consent calendar items one through 10 are now approved. Moving on to non-consent items 11 through 16. Public comment is open. Do I have anyone who'd like to speak to any of those items? Seeing none, public. Do we? Okay. Yes, sir, if you would approach the, the podium, either microphone and state your name and address for the record, please, Hi, sir. Hi, my name is Richard Bell. Um, we are building at 1206 Clark Street. It's item number 14. Um, our residence is temporary, so unless you need it, post office box, or are you good to just know that I'm talking about the 1206 Clark? That item number is fine, okay. thank you. Um, we've made a request for a sidewalk variance and I sent the letter to Dan Cools, um, and I outlined four or five items why I think this is inappropriate for this particular location. We are in a, in a location west of West Boulevard. There's nothing west of us that has sidewalks. As you go up Clark Street, uh, we're just east of the uh, First Congregational Church, and you're going up the hill there. So if we were forced to build a sidewalk, um, we feel like it's uh, not going to be used by any, first of all, anyone. And secondly, um, it's a sidewalk to nowhere because the church doesn't have one. Uh, the street actually curves to the south. There's a big hill there, so the topography doesn't lend itself well to this. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, we found out we could make a request for a variance, so we're here doing that. Um, we'd also like to go on record as saying that should, in the future, um, the rest of this neighborhood require a sidewalk. We're willing to put one in, um, especially, you know, the church to the west. But at this time, it doesn't seem like it's warranted. So, um, again, uh, we would just kindly request you to consider uh, at least putting this in abeyance until which time the rest of the non-conforming properties to the west of us are also requiring a sidewalk. Thank you, Mr. Bell. And if you wouldn't mind, um, when we get to your item, if you would like to answer questions, someone may ask you. Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on. We'll go ahead and close public comment on items 11 through 16, and we'll go to items 11, 12, and 13, which I believe all three need to be continued. If I could get a motion to that effect. I make a motion. A motion by Mr. Solomon yes. and a second by Nordstrom to move these two. The August 9th Public Works meeting is my understanding. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Items 11, 12, and 13 are now continued to the August 9th Public Works committee meeting at the request of the developer. We are now on item number 14, which is request from Richard and Carol Bell for a variance to waive the requirement to install sidewalk per city ordinance 12.08.060 along 1206 Clark Street, Rapid City. Mr. Estes, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. I make a motion we, uh, we grant the variance uh, subject to them signing a uh, warp. If I get a second, I'd like to make, keep the floor. Uh, 
you know, I, well, just like the last time I woke up this morning, Bonnie determined that I was going to require, you know, I was going to not approve this variance or, or even be a part of it because I, I, we got to get it with it when it comes to sidewalks in this town. But then I went over and drove the site. And uh, to, in my mind, if we require them to put the sidewalks in today, it's just kind of punitive in nature with the, with the side slope and stuff. And it would be the last sidewalk. You, you drive on up, the church doesn't have sidewalk, Tompkins Forest, that whole neighborhood west of them doesn't have sidewalk. Um, so at this point in time, if they're willing to sign a warp, I, I think this is fine to grant this variance. You know what I, what I would like to do, and, and, and could I ask Mr. Tech a question? Certainly. Dale, if we took, if we took anybody's ward or took a, took a four or five block area in town where, where you had, didn't have huge topography issues and had bits and pieces of sidewalk and we, we did a sidewalk project, you know, an, a, an assessed project of sidewalks and it took a neighborhood to test how painful this really would be to, um, what, what, how much staff time or how hard would it be to find a, a great spot to, to work as a test? I believe we would have many, many candidates to do uh, a test area, if you will. I, I, I would imagine they exist all over town. Uh, nothing come right to mind, but I, I'm certain that there's no lack of areas that we could go into and do that uh, assessment for sidewalk. Uh, it would take a substantial effort by city staff to to uh, identify the areas, get all the legal notifications uh, necessary, and send send that all out. So, so to pick a spot in each ward would not be realistic. That would really overload it. That I think it would be it would be great if we could do a project in each ward. That way, we could all share the political pain <laughs> of the process. <laughs> Uh, of what it takes, but I, 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 I think you're telling me that's not realistic. It, it certainly makes sense to do that. Um, you know, if we're going to focus on the city, let's focus on the entire city. Uh, uh, keep in mind, if we do an assessed project, the city would have to have the funding to be able to pay the contractor up front and then recoup that over a five-year period. So there's a, uh, also a financial component to that that is part of the equation. Okay. Well, I, I guess um, I, I'm going to think on this a little bit, but but maybe for city council meeting that I might add on to a motion that we ask staff to, to pick a three four block area where where it be where we could test the process of doing a si assessed sidewalk project in a, in a neighborhood area where uh, that be kind of where you don't have a whole lot of rural road sections that, that we're plagued with that where we don't have a lot of topography let's let's go find an e the easiest spot we can and try it and uh, I yield madam chair thank you alderman Estes will go to alderwoman drew please uh, thank you madam chair I do have a question for um, Dale as well mr. tech um, so why this sidewalk in this particular area now? Because these guys are new owners? Is that something that just goes with the territory? City ordinance requires that, <clears throat> excuse me, city ordinance requires that if you obtain a building permit, you are required to install sidewalks on your property if none exist. Uh, the Bells have purchased a property that was undeveloped and are currently building a home on it, so they are required by city ordinance to install sidewalks. Okay, that's that was my question. Uh, okay, I don't know if that changes things or not, but I've got to think about it. Thank you. Alderman Nordstrom, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I went out and drove the same area, and I saw a sidewalk over there. And I, I see a sidewalk on, and in fact, I'm looking at the Google Maps right now, there's a sidewalk um, just east of the 1206 property. And uh, it looks like there is a sidewalk on the south side of the street. And in fact, there, where the name changes, um, there's another sidewalk right there across the street from the 1206 Clark. Um, so I'm seeing sidewalks in the neighborhood, so there wouldn't be a sidewalk to nowhere in this, in this area 
granted the one just to the east of 1206 is probably in poor condition. I agree with that, but um, the uh, but, but uh, the the issue for me is that when do we start putting sidewalks in? And this would be adjoining to another property uh, that has a sidewalk, and and then it it, it leads off into the uh, the area where the the street makes that curve up there. So. I'm comfortable with ordering in a, a sidewalk in, in this area um, because right now there is heavy equipment up there. There is also uh, the uh, construction of the driveway was installed and, and that had to be installed with heavy equipment and, and uh, I don't see any problem with adding this one additional step onto that, that uh, property as well. So again, I come down to the point of when do we start getting st sidewalks installed? And uh, that's, that's, so I'm gonna be voting no on this uh, uh, motion. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Nordstrom. I'll take a, a quick point of privilege. I think something that does need to be considered is thinking back to the, um, the bicycle and pedestrian master plan. And that was really more focused on areas where um, people needed to travel it wasn't you know as remote or secluded areas it was more about getting people from here to there so i think if we were to take a more comprehensive approach to doing that and systematically ordering things in that to me that would be the the priority to look at um, rather than a sidewalk that's just going to run into a hill at this point so that'd be my two cents we do have a motion and a second on the floor to approve this request i would um like Mr. and Mrs. Bell to understand that this is not a final determination. It would need to go to the full council on August 1st for the final determination. This is just a recommending body. However, that is where we are standing right now. Um, I'm gonna go to Mr. Tech. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to remind anyone in the audience that the city council meeting is at 10 a.m. on August 1st instead of the yes, typical 6.30 p.m. So. Do I have any further discussion on this item? Alderwoman Drew. Uh, just a question. Um, do we put together something that they would sign sign a warp, you know, when we when we do this on Monday? Okay, all right. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. All opposed, same sign. Aye. One objection from Mr. Nordstrom. Thank you, people. Gentlemen, lady, <laughs> uh, we'll go on to item. I'm so used to having all guys up here, so just thank you, gentlemen. It kind of threw me for a loop for a moment. <laughs> um, item number 15 is a request from Vista Village LLC for a variance to waive the requirement, once again, to install sidewalk per the same city ordinance 12.08.060 along East North Street adjacent to 544 Century Road. Thank you, Mr. Estes. Everybody sitting down? I make a motion to deny this variance. And if I get a second, I'll. Second. This is it's simple. There's, in my mind, there's no topography issues here. I mean, it's, it's easy. It, it, that was the only reason I, I wanted to go back. The only reason is I didn't feel that there's any reason right now to get an extra 130 foot of sidewalk over on Clark Street due to the, because it's going to require probably a retaining wall, uh, the slope would exceed probably what the, so that was just it. So, you know, and, and they, so I am, uh, other than extenuating circumstances like terrain, I'm, hopefully I'm going to be voting for sidewalks all the time. So, I yield. Thank you, Mr. Estes. I do have a motion and a second on the floor to deny this request. Further conversation, Mr. Nordstrom, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. This one I can also support the uh, the motion, but I just wanted to remind some folks that um, back before we were doing all these warps, some sidewalks were required to be installed. And I remember being helpful in one situation where there was a considerable amount of slope to the uh, street, and I was going to say it's on the Indiana Street where we had to install a sidewalk. And at that time, we didn't have all the heavy equipment. We had to do it pretty much by hand. So. Um, the, yes, it took us a little longer and all of that, but it could be done. It still can be done. Thank you. Alderwoman Drew, please. I, uh, too, am going to vote in uh, favor of the denial. I, I read that this was also um, kind of a worn path right now, as it is. People are using it to, to walk. 
um, and uh, it would be a much safer situation if we had a sidewalk in place. So I'm going to vote to deny. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I do have a motion and a second on the floor to deny this request. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion to deny carries. We are now on to item number 16, which is a report and presentation of the downtown area master plan. We'll turn it over to Sarah Hansel. Good afternoon, Sarah Hansel, Long Range Planning. Item number 16 is to acknowledge the report and presentation of the downtown area master plan. As you know, this is a project that we've been working on in partnership with the Business Improvement District, Destination Rapid City, and many community partners over the last year. Um, we are now entering into the public comment stage of the draft plan. So we gave a presentation to the Planning Commission last Thursday, as well as had an open house. We have an open house today and tomorrow, and we'll also presenting to Legal Finance Committee tomorrow. Um, so we appreciate your discussion and any questions that you have about the master plan. I'd like to turn it over to Brad Siegel. He's with Puma Progressive Urban Management Associates, and they are the lead firm who have been um, guiding us through this process. Um, Brad. Thank you. And thank you, counselors, and good afternoon. Um, I'd, I'd like to walk you through about a 10, 12 minute overview of the plan and then uh, certainly take any questions or, or reactions to the plan. Um, as you know, our firm, along with a group called Gould Evans after, uh, out of Kansas City, as Sarah mentioned, we were selected about a year ago through a competitive process and have really been on the ground uh, for about 10 months working on the downtown plan. Uh, the plan, the document, uh, supporting documents, I believe, were provided to, uh, to council in advance. Um, our study area has included a section of downtown that includes the historic core, um, the east of 5th area, which is an area in, in transition, school of mines, and then up north into the uh, Civic Center area. Um, part of the plan was a market assessment so that we could really balance vision and goals for downtown with some market reality in terms of what could, could really happen over the next five, seven years in downtown. And what we're finding, and this is reinforced by a whole variety of trends that we're seeing in, in cities and towns throughout the country right now, but the most immediate market opportunity um, we identified for downtown Rapid City really is in the housing area and a strong de demand for a variety of housing types, uh, anywhere from 200 to 370 units we felt could be absorbed over the next five years. Um, office space, but creative type office space. Um, the, uh, the space that you see in a development uh, like the garage in the east of Fifth Avenue. Um, we see more and more of that popping up in, in towns and cities and great opportunity east of Fifth between uh, the historic core and the School of Mines. Um, job growth, we did build upon the comp plan that was completed last year and we, uh, we used the projections from the comp plan to look at the downtown share of job growth. We found that that could absorb another maybe 100 to 200,000 square feet of office space over the next five years. Um, hotel market, less of a gap there, but perhaps an opportunity for a small boutique hotel. Retail, downtown Rapid City does, does extremely well, and certainly the strong visitor market helps propel retail. We did identify a few gaps in retail as well in the market assessment. Community outreach process, we have, uh, we've had great response from your community throughout, from last fall into the spring, a whole series of, uh, of working groups, open houses, online survey, um, really better participation than in, um, I would say better, far better than average for this type of planning activity in other communities. Uh, more than 1,700 residents of, of RAPID have registered their opinions, their priorities, their ideas for downtown through this process. Top priorities, and this, this looks like a, sort of a catch-all menu, but there's some keys in here. Um, the community uh, has resonated with the notion of housing for downtown. Arts and culture, and, and as the council is aware, a cultural plan was completed um, uh, early in, in our process, just coincidentally, so I think it rose some awareness there. Safety was a top concern when we did our survey work, and a lot of that is perception. There's, there's reality and perception in safety, and part of this was perception of safety, concern that downtown's not lit, uh, not well lit enough, um, and also just downtown streets get a little barren um, after dark and particularly off season. 
Um, connections, how do we connect different parts of the downtown and also to adjoining neighborhoods. Um, employment, that downtown should continue to be a major job center, not only for the city, but for the region. Uh, parking, no surprise here, but uh, we heard a bit about parking and we looked at how the parking is currently managed and we've got some recommendations on that. Spent some time really identifying key streets. What are, what are some of the key streets and, and should they be um, uh, adjusted in any certain way? And we've got some suggestions for that. Mixed use development. Um, community sees that as a way to also bring housing, certainly into downtown. If there is an opportunity where commercial on the ground floor and then housing above would work in Rapid City, the sense is downtown is the place for that. And then lastly, School of Mines. We've worked closely with the School of Mines throughout this process, and both the school and the downtown community are eager to, uh, to look for a variety of linkages, physical linkages between those two destinations, but also programming um, and also expanding educational opportunities as well. So the plan itself is anchored by these core values. Uh, everything within the plan ultimately relates to these five words in terms of advancing these values for downtown. So a livable place, how do we make downtown uh, a place that, uh, that more and more people would, would gravitate to and take advantage of the market and actually live there. Uh, prosperous, it's first and foremost a business center. So how do we make sure that uh, businesses that are down there have the best chance for success a place that's active. Um, and I should mention too that, that Rapid has done some tremendous things over the last five to 10 years um, in downtown. You've, you've made a lot of right decisions and certainly Main Street Square, uh, one of the best activated, best designed public spaces that we have seen in, uh, in any downtown, let alone a, a downtown of your size. So how do we build on that success and how do we continue to activate that space? Welcoming, how do we make uh, downtown make sure it's safe and, and welcoming at all times? And then this connected issue, how do, we, how do we best connect these different destinations in and around downtown? There's a fairly extensive design framework. I, I, I'm just gonna touch on some highlights. We've got a lot of slides, but I'm gonna just touch on a few highlights here. And this is our partners, Gould Evans uh, out of Kansas City. This is really their domain. But we provide some design framework ideas both for the private realm and, and, and the public realm, if you will. The, the development side is, is uh, private buildings and, and are there some design ideas for, for property owners and developers. And then the right-hand side of that chart really relates more to uh, the public space, the streets, the sidewalks, any sort of parks or plazas that we have downtown. So we did look at cutting your downtown and a whole variety of cool little districts, but we ended up with two. So we really boiled down uh, downtown to east and west of 5th. So east of 5th is really the historic core of downtown and, and certainly a lot of that area is working extremely well. And then the area east of downtown, including um, what we're gonna call an innovation district and then the School of Mines, becomes a great opportunity for Rapid City, certainly over the next five, seven, 10 years moving forward. And we'll talk about how we take advantage of those opportunities. Um, we then got a little bit more surgical here and looked at how do we encourage different development. And one thing we found, and is, is really a top recommendation, and in fact, in my presentation today, I'm gonna try to pull out maybe four or five quick wins, if you will, or, or, or critically important items that could be done relatively quickly. Uh, but one is your existing zoning and uh, land use. East of Fifth, uh, the zoning and land use standards really were put together decades ago. And the market opportunities today are completely different. So the commercial zoning down there does not uh, really uh, uh, encourage uh, property owners or developers to do mixed use, to encourage the type of housing and, and also the type of innovative work environments that are that are marketable today. So one of our top rec recommendations, and, and we went into a fair amount of detail, we've got a, uh, if you want some riveting reading, there's an eight page zoning memo that is um, attached to the plan. But we go into a fair amount of detail about how the city could um, update its zoning relatively quickly and um, bring that area east of fifth in particular up to date in terms of today's market opportunities. Development strategies, we do have some images that hopefully uh, could, um, could uh, motivate and, and inspire the community on what could happen. 
So this is a key city site. Uh, we know it's a site that Rapid's been looking at for years at 5th and St. Joseph. And what we're suggesting here is based on today's market conditions is a mixed-use project that could happen there, uh, residential over commercial, including a, another parking structure. Uh, we do acknowledge the need for parking. And then this is what that thing would look like. So this is the Presidential Plaza site, and this is suggesting a five to six story development, which we think is very marketable today. Um, built to the street, uh, ground floor commercial, also providing um, a connection on, on the other side of this project across Fifth to bridge that. Uh, another short-term suggestion for the city is, is use this work if it's helpful, if, if that's a desirable vision, to help the city market the site. And um, there are, if I'm sure there's local development interests, there are also developers in the region that could be inspired by that and could work with the city to, to bring that to fruition. Another idea we've had is in that innovation district east of 5th, is there an opportunity to create a signature street where that whole creative community, if you will, could really come together? And we, we got pretty excited, and again, a lot of people were scratching their heads when the planners got excited about this, but we got excited about 3rd Street. Um, we like that 3rd Street dead ends at the county complex. Um, at the uh, north end of 3rd, it leads into the trail system. There's about three or four blocks there that we think could be essentially almost a spine of that creative area, that innovation area. And this rendering, that is 3rd Street, and that shows what 3rd Street could be with two, three-story development. We think everything you see on that slide is, is realizable. This is not pie in the sky. Uh, based on current market demand, we really feel that relatively small-scale development, particularly if it includes housing, 8, 12, 15, 20 units, uh, could be absorbed quickly in this marketplace. So this, uh, this illustration shows a redefinition of Third Street and also a two- to three-story de mixed-use development pattern along it. The plan also includes uh, a variety of ideas with the uh, public spaces, so how do we connect different destinations, how do we connect the university to the core of downtown, how do we connect Civic Center to the core. Um, we suggest a different treatment for different streets. Not every street needs to have bikes on them and not every street uh, needs to be a pedestrian street, but we did find that uh, there were selected streets um, that, that would work extremely well that way. So we do identify um, different pedestrian, bike, and even auto-oriented streets, streets that uh, really uh, vehicles should continue to be dominant. Uh, Omaha, for example, is a street that uh, it is what it is and should be continued to be a primarily vehicular street moving forward. Um, and then there are also diagrams. So there's different diagrams within the plan, and this is more of uh, Gould Evans' work to try to uh, illustrate what some of these street type means uh, mean at different key locations within the downtown. Design guidelines are provided. Uh, there are a couple ways that Rapid City could go with design guidelines. The design guidelines are primarily related to the uh, private sector development that happens. Uh, the design guidelines are, are, were intended to be flexible. They could be applied either through regulation with some sort of review board, or design guidelines could be advisory and then could also be enforced, if you will, if there's any incentive involved. So if a property is looking for an incentive, a tax abatement, or if they're looking for some sort of zoning variance, then the, uh, the design guidelines would become prescriptive in order to get that incentive. And if someone's not seeking an incentive, these are more advisory. So that's something we could discuss if you're interested in terms of how to actually utilize the design guidelines. Lastly, action plan. Um, how are we going to get stuff done? So we're looking at how do we mobilize not only the city, but also we've been working with key civic partners. The Business Improvement District, for example, uh, participated in this process, um, actually paid for, for part of the plan. So how do we work both on the public side, the city side, and also with, uh, with our private sector partners. Uh, the action plan is divided into three different categories of activity. Economy, those activities are related to attracting jobs and investment into downtown. 
experience? Is, is that experience of walking around downtown and, and being a visitor or, or an employee or someone who, uh, who, come da- who comes down here to shop or, or, or for lunch? And then environment gets into the, uh, the physical aspects of downtown, the, uh, the streets and the, the buildings. How, how does all of that relate as we, as we walk around downtown? So the action plan itself goes into a fair amount of detail. There are some uh, matrices within the plan document that provide short-term, long-term ideas and talk about why these things are important. There are some key principles, though, in the action plan. Under economy, housing everywhere, how do we sprinkle, again, small-scale units throughout downtown and how do we encourage that? Jobs and innovation, what different niches are next for Rapid City? And then uh, linkages with, with school minds, which also relates to economic development. Uh, Rapid is fortunate. You have an endless pipeline of talent that is highly sought in the nation's economy right now, just an endless pipeline of STEM, skilled people. How do we keep some of those folks in Rapid, and can downtown and this innovation district be a place to do that? On the experience, uh, building upon the recent cultural plan, and and how do we build a a stronger arts and cultural uh, experience downtown? Uh, one of the uh, opportunities that captivates us is, is something that's just now being talked about in town, but the notion of some sort of Native American cultural center certainly would fit extremely well within downtown. Parking management, um, you did a parking study 10 years ago, and we looked at that, and that's, that's a top recommendation is to update the parking uh, study. Uh, will parking is, is always an issue every town we work in, but it, you are unusual. Rapid City is unusual in having free parking in the core and paid parking in the periphery. We saw evidence of employees and owners abusing that free parking, and that, that really is actually costing the, the retailers some revenue. So let's relook at the parking management study we did 10 years ago and, and maybe employ some new strategies moving forward. Safe and clean. Um, one of the immediate recommendations is something that uh, really is, is, um, is ready to go, is, is an enhanced lighting plan for downtown. And certainly the Business Improvement District is, is all, has partnered with the city in terms of planning with that. Environment, key streets, a uh, variety of different treatments on different streets related to pedestrian, bikes, wayfinding. Uh, your three-lane, one-way streets have traffic counts that uh, really are, 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 do not require that type of capacity. So the traffic counts on those three-lane, one-way streets um, uh, could be easily narrowed. We, we are recommending not changing those streets to two-way. We realize that would be expensive. Um, and um, that would be a radical change. But we are suggesting narrowing your one-way, three-way streets to two lanes. Um, and um, incorporating additional pedestrian and bicycle space on them. Connections and gateways beyond the streets gets into trails, um, gateways. And then land use and zoning. Um, the, the, again, the, 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 uh, we have a very detailed outline on some zoning uh, modifications. Uh, strongly recommending that it, that would be a short-term recommendation sometime in the, in the next six months, if possible to seriously consider revising the zoning. We really feel that that would uh, unlock a lot of event investment potential, particularly east of 5th. And in terms of supporting downtown revitalization, um, if not the strongest, maybe one of the three strongest recommendations of the plan. Quick wins. So there's a list of quick stuff. Uh, there's, uh, I'll just pick three of those that, uh, that again, that if we were uh, going to have our top three or four list, Um, The zoning is there on economy. That would be on that list. Above it is the notion of some sort of tax abatement program for housing. This is a tool that would require a collaboration with the county. Um, We feel this is actually a a more attractive tool than tax increment financing, particularly if it was directed toward, um, toward a use such as housing. It's also an incentive that would be used over a much shorter period of time. It would actually cost the county and the city less in terms of a tax abatement versus TIF. We can talk about that. The other uh, very important idea on those quick wins, I think is number five, is that downtown lighting plan and really demonstrate to the community that we are moving forward in, the, in making it safer and, and certainly on the perception side. A number of other ideas of merit there. 
Um, last couple slides, there's a whole variety of revenue sources that we've identified in the plan to make some of these things happen. Some of these tools the city has and has used in the past. Uh, some are new, such as the tax abatement would be new to Rapid City. Um, and some are, are not, would not require city action at all. So tax uh, credit enhancements, credit enhancements from large employers. Uh, we've met with some of your large employers in this process. In other markets we're working on, uh, large employers are actually providing uh, leasing guarantees or, or loan guarantees to help get housing jump-started in a market. Crowdsourcing to, uh, to create sort of small-scale, visible, popular projects. And a final idea that would be on our, our short list, our short list of four or five ideas. The plan also recommends from the city side uh, the designation of a downtown planner that within your planning staff designate a downtown planner to work with the private sector and actually implement these ideas. I think we were told at the very beginning of the process that uh, what, what the town didn't want was yet another plan that was going to look pretty but, but sit on a shelf. Uh, the city spent a lot of money on this. So in order to implement it, we, we are hopeful that there has been some momentum developed in the process. Uh, there has been some leadership created. We're meeting with a coordinating committee later today, a whole diverse array of folks uh, that are being set up to champion the plan. So from a staffing side, that downtown planner recommendation to us makes a lot of sense. Um, and there's our calendar, looking for final adoption of the plan uh, by early October. So at this point, I think that's it. I think that's our presentation. Sarah, anything else to add? Um, just to give a reminder for the open houses, they are this evening from 4 to 7 p.m. and tomorrow morning from 8 to 11 a.m., both being held at the Journey Museum and Learning Center in the upstairs library. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Turn over to the committee. We'll go to Alderman Solomon, please. Uh, First, could I make a motion to acknowledge, if I can get a second? Second. Um, and I have questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Siegel. Great, sure. great presentation. And maybe Sarah can answer this question better. I was at the Planning Commission uh, meeting just as a citizen. And I saw that there were some questions from the West Boulevard neighborhood group. And I'm just curious uh, what the results were from those conversations. Yes, good question. So um, we did spend some more time with them following the Planning Commission meeting. Um, a couple different things that we were visiting with them about was one, the planning boundary. There is a portion of the West Boulevard Historic District that is included in the planning boundary. Um, we wanted to talk with them a little bit more about why that is included in the boundary. Um, we acknowledge that, that that neighborhood really is and has historically been intricately linked to downtown in terms of people living close to where they work and just kind of the interaction of, of that neighborhood feeding the downtown area. Many people choose to live in West Boulevard because of its proximity to downtown. So that's a really natural relationship there. Um, so we just wanted to emphasize why it is important for those properties to be included within the planning boundary itself. But then on top of that, there are some recommendations in the plan for um, what's called the neighborhood place type and what kind of identifying some types of development that would be appropriate in that area. Um, we've listened to some of their concerns about uh, maybe calling out where the historic properties are with more specificity so that it's clear that the intent for development in and around that area is really to be compatible with the neighborhood and to not be um, development that is detrimental to historic property. So we've had some great conversations with them and we're going to be making some alterations to the plan to make it a little bit more clear what those intentions are for that area. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Nordstrom. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, if I can follow up on the Historic Preservation Group, uh, the uh, conversation that you had with that, those folks and taking the time to actually talk to them and listen to what they had to say, I greatly appreciated what you had to say and how they uh, responded to that. So again, thanks for taking the time to visit with those folks. Um, am, am I understanding correctly that they Journey Museum and Learning Center is back within the boundary now. Yes, I was just going to add that on. Another um, another way that we're responding to the community feedback that we've gotten so far is to uh, make sure that the Journey Museum is included within the planning boundary itself. Currently, if you take a look at the framework plan, there's um, the concept of, of connections across the across Rapid Creek over to the Journey Museum. There's already a recommendation for an improved connection there, um, but 
we want to also make sure the facility itself is included in the planning area as a destination and important landmark downtown. Agreed, and I believe that it is a, one of those key areas that, that is titled the Connections and Gateways, so thank you for doing that as well. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what the proposals coming forward on the zoning uh, changes on this. But the, the largest concern I have on this, and your, within your recommendations, you're uh, asking us to do more partnerships. I'm, my concern is that I think partner, the city is one of the, we're not very good at it. We're not good at developing partnerships. And, I, and uh, if we can have a plan or a program coming forward on how to develop partnerships, um, the greatest example right now is going on with our TIFs, what's going on with them and how that demonstrates how the city is very weak in that area. Um, so if we can strengthen that part of it, I believe this will be very helpful for our downtown master plan. And then um, I'm also looking forward to working with some other groups as well on on uh, some other projects within this. And you've given us, a, you have given us a long to-do list. And it's gonna take us some, a long time to get through this list, so I really appreciate it. And if we can get this downtown uh, planner involved in this, I think that will be a very big, strong plus for us. Thank you, yield. Alderwoman Drew, please. Uh, just a couple of quick comments. Um, an education group that I never hear uh, referenced or in any of our conversations um, would be the uh, Black Hills Beauty College and Headlines Academy, which are both part of the downtown areas and predominantly young women. You know, I'm very concerned about you know the lighting projects that you guys have talked about. They've expressed to me they feel unsafe when they're leaving their classes late at night. So that's something that's really important to me to, to look at the um, safer streets, the less light pollution and dark skies project. I'd like to bring that to the fore. But as long as we're looking at East of Fifth, um, you know, the, the rural kids that come into Headlines or Black Hills Beauty College, um, especially at Headlines, they don't have parking in that parking lot. They have no lighted parking. So um, I'd like to see some, some, you guys look into that, you know, as you go forward, because that'll definitely be, be a big part of the East of Fifth project. And they are part of our population and a growth industry. So I'd like to have that looked at. Thank you. Thank you. I do have a motion on the floor um, to acknowledge this report. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Move to I have a motion to adjourn by Nordstrom, a second by Solomon. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>